Okay, hi everybody, welcome to a session where I've put together, I think, a little suite of seven past paper questions on fiscal policy. Great chance for you to check your understanding of fiscal policy. For each question, press the pause button at the appropriate moment, have a go at the question, and then we'll walk through the answers together. So here's our first question. A government decides to pursue a more expansionary fiscal policy, whilst the central bank of that country decides to pursue a tighter monetary policy. Which combination of policy changes, A, B, C or D, is consistent with this decision? So here's the chance, here's the moment to press the pause button, have a look at this question and let's go through the answer when you're ready. Okay, so the government's pursuing a more expansionary fiscal policy. That's going to be the first two columns. It's going to be public services and tax rates. Uh, monetary policy will be the columns three and four, asset purchases by the central bank, otherwise known as quantitative easing, and the bank rate, or the base interest rate, of course, which is the main tool of monetary policy for most central banks. The correct answer, I think, to question one is B. Let's take fiscal policy first. That's expansionary. Now, uh, public spending on uh, public services has, is no change. So that's neutral in a sense. But income tax rates have been decreased. Uh, B is therefore more expansion than an A, where we've increased public spending, but we've increased tax rates. So in a sense, we've, B is neutral and expansionary as opposed to expansionary and contractionary. Um, you could also argue, for example, that D is neutral and expansionary. So uh, on the fiscal policy side, it's going to be B or D. Now, a tighter monetary policy means that the central bank would be decreasing their purchases of, of, of assets. Quantitative easing, of course, is when they, they buy significant increase in assets purchased by central banks to inject more cash and liquidity into the banking system. So a decrease in assets purchased would be a contractionary form of quantitative easing and the bank rate no change. Again, uh, one is contractionary, one is neutral. So we do have an expansion of fiscal policy and a contractionary monetary policy. And that's why the answer is B to this question. Question number two, what might reduce, what might reduce the effectiveness of fish, fiscal expansion in increasing national output? Have a go please at question number two. Okay, so what do we think here? Well, we're trying to, this question is hinting at the, uh, of basically saying when fiscal policy is relatively ineffective in, in stimulating aggregate demand and, and GDP. And the right answer to question two is C. Uh, and this is linked to the theory of crowding out, which you may well have come across as part of your revision. If a government borrows more, for example, to fund increased spending, that could lead to higher market interest rates or higher taxes in the future, leading to some form of crowding out. A would be monetary policy. That actually accelerates the process because it makes exports uh, more competitive. B, again, monetary expansion is expansionary. And D, well, actually, it's reverse. And fiscal expansion would lead to the expectation of higher uh, levels of tax chase in, in the future. Let's have a look at question three. What would be a positive effect on the growth of an economy in the short run if the government reduced a direct tax on people's earnings? Have a go, please, at question number three. Well, a cut in direct tax on earnings, of course, is a cut in uh, things like income tax or national insurance. The correct answer is D, because a fall in income tax, for example, would increase people's disposable incomes, incomes after tax, which would therefore lead to an increase in uh, consumer spending, assuming people spend uh, an increase in their incomes. And that would stimulate the growth of the economy because increased consumption, of course, is a key part of aggregate demand. Here's our fourth question, slightly more macro international feel to this one, but it's all to do with fiscal policy. In 2015, the World Bank agreed to give a loan of 650 million US dollars to Angola to help stabilize their economy. The bank said Angola needed to have a fiscal policy that would encourage the diversification of its economy. And the question is which policy would be consistent with this requirement set out by the World Bank as a condition for their loan. Have a go, please, at question number four. Okay, the right answer is A, 
Uh, tourism, of course, is often a long-term development strategy to help diversify. Angola is heavily dependent on oil, for example, for its exports. So using fiscal policy, a government subsidy to partner with the French hotel chain would be diversification. Uh, interest rates, B, would be monetary policy. Um, C is regulation, regulatory policy, not really fiscal policy. And um, D, uh, of course, is not diversification. We have three questions left. A government adopts a policy of fiscal contraction combined with monetary expansion. What will be the expected impact of this policy mix on the country's exchange rate and the yield on government bonds? Now, this is a tough one, so take a moment or two to think through the answer to this one. Press the pause button if you want to, and then we'll go through the answer. OK, question five. Uh, fiscal contraction suggesting the government's going to be spending less, taxing more, or certainly borrowing less, trying to bring down their budget deficit. Monetary expansion. Well, monetary expansion implies lower interest rates and therefore a depreciation of the exchange rate, perhaps because if interest rates come down, or if there's an increase in quantitative easing, then you'd expect the, uh, there to be a depreciation of the exchange rate, perhaps via an outflow of hot money. So it's going to be C or D. Now, what about the impact on bond yields? Well, I think that's going to be uncertain. If the government's borrowing less, then in theory the supply of bonds will be lower, the price of bonds would go up, and therefore the yield on bonds would go down. But it's by no means certain that that is the case, particularly if there's a depreciation in the exchange rate, which might make overseas investors slightly more uh, uncertain and uh, they might demand a risk premium to buy the government debt. So we can't be certain what the impact on bond yields is going to be, and therefore my answer there would be D. Two more questions. Here we go. Which combination of government policies will be most likely to affect intergenerational equity? I like this question. Intergenerational equity refers to equity, fairness across generations within a population. So have a go, please, at question number six. OK, the right answer to question number six is C. Uh, educational maintenance allowances, giving students, for example, some financial support to go to school and college. Uh, that would be a fiscal policy, uh, trying to increase um, the, uh, if you like, the qualifications, the human capital of younger people. And the fallen state pensions, of course, would be governments cutting back on welfare uh, to people who have retired. And uh, clearly there's an... There was a, a clear intergenerational equity uh, case there, whereas the other ones really don't deal with those differences in the, in, the, in, the, in the living standards of populations at different ages. One more question, hopefully doing well on these. Here we go. Here's question seven. Fiscal policy also becomes a supply side tool for increasing the productive potential of the economy through all of the following except what so of these four options three are if you like fiscal supply side policies uh, but what's the what's the other one out on this one have a go please at question number seven and the right answer here is the exchange rate subsidies for education and training yep that can improve the human capital of the workforce tax rebates for r d of course can drive innovation and improved spending on infrastructure is critical to long and aggregate supply. A fall in the exchange rate actually is not part of fiscal policy. It is indeed monetary policy. There we go. Seven questions on fiscal policy. Hopefully you did well. There's some tough questions there, some challenging questions. Uh, I hope you found this, uh, this little exercise useful. Stay safe, uh, stay focused, and see you again sometime soon.